Hey YouTube, we're here with the Cessna 182 UMX. Um, here of late we just put in uh, flaps the other day and got a couple maiden flights in for you. Worked really, really nice. Uh, very pleased with it. And in light of the stellar performance, I came up with the idea that I wanted to add some scale details and predominantly I'm just worried about these three antenna. And I'm going to show you my process. This is my super sloppy handwriting um, that I probably did left-handed for some stupid reason. So I took this image I got online and just did a Google search for it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these micrometers and I'll tell you how I figure out the size. I'm going to take a measurement point on the plane, so just the bottom of the fuse to like right next to the flaps, so just right on the fuse. So we'll just call that 50 millimeters. And then let's measure how long the antenna is. From the root of the antenna to the tip of the antenna, uh, it's like 21, 21 actually, millimeters. Okay, so now we'll do a little bit of math. Okay, so the math is uh, 21 over 50, which becomes 0.42. So the antenna is uh, 0.42 times, times X, X being the height of the aircraft. So we'll measure real quick. We'll just take the micrometers and we'll open them up to the same approximate spot. See how it's just resting on the top of the wing and then right behind the landing gear. We'll set this back down. It looks like that's like 76, 76 millimeters. 76 millimeters times 76 is so it's 31 point 31.92 which is also known as 32 millimeters okay so this should be hypothetically 32 millimeters so since this is a scale appearance thing let's double check uh, one more test point here and we'll test uh, right one thing I noticed about this plane yeah it does have the longer this sweep here and I actually found that exact paint scheme on a couple of different images, which is pretty cool. So we'll measure right in front of where the horizontal stabilizer comes to the fuse here. So we'll just bring it in here and just go right down there and just try to go square. So we're at, uh, looks like about 35. So 35 millimeters compared to this antenna, which I think is the same length, but it's hard to tell with certainty. Gosh, it's hard to tell. If I did 25, I'm going to call that 24. Twenty-four millimeters. Okay, so we'll do the same math. 24 over 35 gives us a factor of 68. So 0 0.6857, so we'll call it 69x. Well, we'll call it 69y here. Then we're going to measure right here. Okay, so that came out to. What is that, like 40? Okay, so let's call it 40. So, times 40 equals 27.43 millimeters. Okay, so 27. Okay, so now we need to test 32 and 27. So what's the difference between 27 over 31.92. Yeah, so it's a little bit smaller. Um, the perspective should be satisfied. Um, the perspective should be satisfied, you know, because obviously as you, you take this picture and you get further away from the camera, it's going to be smaller relative the size of the picture. Um, so if I measure here, that should resolve that that conflict and difference. So we are just going to go with 27 and 32. So what I did was I, I came up with, well, first of all, I turned on the scale. I'm going to zero it off. 
and I just wanted to measure how much these three things weighed because as you know we added um, was it 13 grams we added with uh, flaps and then the LEDs I think we added like 7 grams so we had like 21 grams to this plane already um, which is a lot but it's not I mean it's not stop the plane from flying in fact I think it flies great still okay so just uh, as a quick reference looks like we're talking about so we should be less than one gram in total by the time we add uh, three different antennas of course we're to shorten these so we're at about a third of a gram by the time you add some CA and you add some um, root material I think you'll be okay okay so 27 millimeters since there's one of them we'll do the the first one here so there's 27, so 5 plus 2 is 27. Okay, so we'll go ahead and mark this right there. That's 27. And then we can take and, um, well, I think I want to cut it like this. I'm going to use this saw. And there's a little score mark on it. I'll just hold this down at an approximate angle. And there's, you know, a million ways to skin this cat, guys. In fact, I might be able to get the other antenna off the other half. We're still almost there. Kind of hard to hold this thing down. Surprisingly hard. Now I'm just going to use this super, super sharp X-Acto knife for my finish cut. Okay? And then, you know what, I'm just going to take this and just give it a nice quick scrub. Holding it at the approximate angle of the image. Okay, so that's a pretty good angle. Let's double check our measurement. Yeah, that's pretty close to 27. Okay, so now in the image you can see that it widens up at the base where it connects to the aircraft. So like if you were to explode it, it would look something like this and then the antenna goes up and it sweeps out. And it comes in like this and it, it sweeps down to the top of the aircraft. Except on this one, it looks like the sweep actually is just on the back. So really, we just need material added to the back. Let's see how long this one is. This might be pretty close to our other length and then we don't have to cut it twice. 32? Uh, that's actually a bit too long. So that's good. We're going to barely add any weight. That's pretty cool. So material for the base could be this stuff. And then I've already got my angle cut here. So let me go ahead and cut a little bit off of here. Oh, that worked way easier. Of course, then it shot way the heck over here. Yes, we got lucky. And the other thing you could do is you could uh, you could use some balsa wood, which would be super duper light. And it would probably be equally... In fact, that's a way better idea. I'm just going to use a little chunk of balsa wood. I would normally do this with plastic, and I had picked out a, a little piece of plastic for this, which is what we use for the Aero Commander, so that it would not be quite so robust in case it got hit. Um, but the thing is, I just thought, you know... If I do that, I think I might regret the way it turns out. So we're going to cut this at a steep angle. This is an extremely sharp X-Acto knife. Jeez. Okay, so we're going to take and see how much of that we got to remove still. Oh, we got tons to remove. That's way too much. The other thing is I'm wondering if this antenna might be just a little bit too thick. For a scale antenna. Let's take it back to about here. See if that works. Um, one little trick that works nice is you can use, especially when you have a sharp blade like this, um, and you can use it on accident too because it will hold stuff even when you don't want it to. See how it's easy to pick that up? And then that's going to give you, hmm, it's going to give you the look, but it's not enough. I don't think it's enough. i got to go with a sweep. Perfect. Just like that. 
and then we'll get the angle right and we'll just go ahead and glue that in there and see if it's satisfactory looks like it's probably gonna work these scale details don't have to be exactly perfect you could probably get away with just sticking this in there and you'd still have a pretty good result oh by the way I wanted to show you guys something cool check out this monster load whoa buddy that is a lot of crashes and I got this at a a new place online not a new place but it's a new place to me it's called uh, like model uh, model distributors or I don't know model merchants model merchants and uh, they had like a 5% off when you bought more than one bottle so I got two bottles I just picked what I would normally pick and the price was commensurate or better than Hobby King which is you know instead of being like 16 bucks it might be like 13 bucks it wasn't a lot better but it was a little better that's the thing about glue is they know they know you have to buy it they've got you from the short hair so so I'm gonna glue this together and then we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit more trimming and interestingly I've got this flat spot here I'm wondering if maybe I should just take that flat spot to receive the the detail that's what I'm gonna do okay now we'll use this uh, medium CA here uh, the tip is clogged in case you guys are wondering about the arrow commander flaps which I'm sure some of you are um, it's still on the agenda but it's just not something I'm gonna do and on a weeknight I have not got enough time to dig into that project I might work on the proof of concept stuff getting the radios ready okay so once that's on there then we'll just let that sit for a second don't even need to really use any kicker because it's just wood to wood contact so it always holds really nice in that case um, keep it in mind that when you use that, especially that raw softball so wood, you, you kind of got to put a little glue on the outside of it. Okay, so you can see kind of the shape. It's going to be trimmed flat still. Um, but let's go ahead and use kicker just for speed. I don't waste a bunch of time on this. And when we're done, we'll paint it up. And the so probably, I don't know if we'll use gloss white or if we'll use this flat white. But either way, I'll show you what the part number is the testers part number okay so now this one's gonna go it's actually gonna be off to the side just a little bit this is pretty thick I'm nervous it's not gonna look good Tipping it will help you to get that flat, that flat bite. Okay. Okay, let's see how this looks. That looks pretty awesome, actually. It's just a little bit too thick. And we'll check the weight here in a second, too. And then this, call me nuts, but I must have shortened that too much. Because that looks like it's too short, guys. Because if I were to hold my plane at this angle and stick that down there, it looks like it's too short, guys. Oh, son of a gun. That might actually work to my advantage, though, because uh, I think this looks a little bit too thick. So, just trying to think. What could I use that would work good for that? I know I could take a... You know like a twisty tie and I could extend the antenna that would definitely give me that scale look without adding hardly any weight um, but you know what I'm wondering if maybe it would be better to just go ahead and do this and just thin it up a little bit remember this is an extremely sharp exacto knife so if you're gonna try to carve it like this make sure it's an extremely sharp exacto knife or you're going to have a heck of a time doing that. 
because these toothpicks don't like to trim like this very good. You usually end up screwing them up if you do this. At least that's my experience. Okay, so now I could have put it in the drill chuck, but now that I have the base on there, I don't know if I can get away with that. So, crap, where did it go? I'll find it. Okay, so, see how that's going to take like 16 years? I'm going to try to cheat because I already know that this thing might end up being wasted. I like the idea and I'll do it for the longer ones, but this one might be too small. I'm just going to get these fingers from the chuck to hold on to. You see how I've just got that that one little piece between the fingers? And then I can just run this. Did it fall out again? Okay, I'm going to find it. I'll come right back. Okay, so you can see that helped to smooth it out quite a bit. I'm curious if that's good enough. Just making it thin might might make it look less stout. You know what? That's probably going to be fine. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I'm going to just go with this. Meaning I'm going to get this one done. I'm going to still mess with it until I'm happy with the shape, but... I'm not going to make another one for the back. Okay, so real quick weight check. Okay, so we'll zero this. I mean, it doesn't even register, so it's super dinky. That would be pushing the limits of that scale, by the way, so. It weighs something. It's just not showing up on there. Okay, so now on the other one, we're going to be a little bit smarter about the way we do this. Knowing what we know now, I can take and round these off just really neatly by holding this mechanism like that. Well, that's one way to, to cut them too, evidently. I must have put a little too much pressure on there. But anyway, you can see it's a lot more smooth on the edges now. So now my objective is to cut this down to length. And in this case, well, shoot, that's right. This one was already the right length, I think. You know what? That's virtually perfect. Let's see how that looks on there. You know what? That looks small too. What the heck? I'm just going to go a little bit bigger on this. Let's just look at these. Let's see how they look. I think that might look a little big too, actually. Because it's just thick. I'm having visions of chopping my finger with this now. I'm going to try to split it in half if I can. Okay, that was pretty successful. Chuck is letting go. It's part of the problem. That looks pretty good. That looks better. So now we need to make another little groovy deal at the bottom. So we'll cut another little triangle out. And I don't want to cut it that way because I want the direction of the grain to be up and down. 
So I'll take this and flip it upside down. Just like so. If I glue it in there, then I can trim it. But I do need to trim it a little bit more to give that sweep. Maybe I can run that upside down now. Yes. Okay, that'll work. Cool. So just using the tip of the X-Acto knife to hold that. Whoa, that was like way too much. I don't want to ruin the tip of my blade, but I don't think it will. Okay, so got to work really quick now. Okay. Just get some kick around there. Awesome. Now I can very carefully. I've chopped my fingers doing that before, by the way. Lots of chopping going on in this video today. All right, so now, of course, we got to trim that down. I could also leave that as my, you know, steak. But I just think it's going to be, I want to make a smaller steak, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that later. Oh, and if you're watching Horizon, which I doubt you are, um, this is the sort of detail that I expect as a modeler to add. I don't expect you guys to add antennas, but I do expect you to add flaps and LEDs and things of the sort that seem to be in vogue. Ooh, that's pretty fancy right there. Okay, so now that's going to act as the base. So that would go, how far back on the wing are we going to go? I think it goes right kind of almost in front of the, the flaps. Yeah, that's going to look, that's going to look pretty good. I can definitely live with that. Okay, so now the tricky part becomes, I got to try to duplicate this and make it look fairly similar. It would be kind of nice if I could get some of this material off of here without doing just that, making like a notch in it. Let's do a quick weight test. Okay, so... Doesn't even register. Or it's .05, so it's just very small. .05 grams, in case you're wondering what that is, guys. Okay, so now on the second one, um, I'm just going to grab it with the chuck and get it thinned up right away. Guys, if you're looking for a good drill, this thing's been pretty awesome. And I got it with this in a pack and it was on sale and it was an awesome deal. The only thing I don't like about it is the chuck doesn't go down to zero. It does have a certain thickness, whereas like the Chinese junk ones, you can bite all the way down onto like a, you know, a pin, like a decoration pin. Are you kidding? It fell out again. All right, guys, I'm going to find that. I'll come right back. Found it, guys. Okay, so we need a little bit more on that. Oh, by the way, I was just going to give you guys a sneak peek if you're watching this video. The ASW28 will live again, meaning I've got a new one coming. Except this time I'm not going to mess around. It's going to have a new ESC right off the bat. A 60 amp. With an s back. That time I expected it to fall. Okay, cool. So that's smoothed out nicely. Let's compare and contrast. This one will probably be a little bit thinner to begin with, so that's good. 
the last one I had to split, remember? That was a real fun project. All right, so now we're gonna take and we're gonna position this base. We're gonna try our best to get it exactly the same. So because of the nature of this part of the project, we're probably gonna have to put a groove or something in there. A groovy groove. So normally we've been cutting that with um, the sander thing, but in this case, I'm just going to do it that way. All right, so now this one we want to have a similar shape. And really, it's just kind of, for all intents and purposes, it's there to hold the CA. The CA is going to make up the, the structural integrity. And then we're going to paint it. So it should be a pretty straightforward process. All right. You guys see how I put the kicker on there first? That's just because I don't want to fight it this time. I'm just letting it work. Sweet. Now I can wipe off the tip of my blade. And I can just sweep this through. So let's see if we're about the same for the two antennas now. Got a little bit of stickiness. Yeah, it's going to be really close. I just got to be careful how much material I take off. And I just noticed. Get glue stuck in the spout. Okay, so notice which way it's going. Okay. Yes, I think that looks good. Yes, yes. They're not exactly the same, but they're pretty darn tootin'. Pretty darn close. Now that I knocked the, the tip off of that one, I think we're close enough. Close enough to get away with it. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna do some, uh, some more CA on this one. It seems weak. We don't break off the rest of it. And so once I do that CA, then what that'll do for me is it'll kind of almost fill in the gaps too. And so I'm just going to spread and allow this to uh, kind of make up some thickness there. That should be dry enough to drop. Kind of the same scenario here. Jeez, I didn't really mean to get that much, but still, it's okay. <sighs> okay, so we got that ready to rock. Get the drip. All right, cool. All right, so there you have it. So now we just got to paint them and stick them on. Uh, guys, you don't need to see me paint them. That's just a waste of time. Flat white, FS. 3785 by Model Masters. It's enamel. Here's the UPC or SKU or whatever you want to call that. T52041 176. I'm going to paint them. I'll come right back so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so one step I got to do before I can get these totally installed is I got to take and drill a small little hole, a pilot hole. And then I'm going to use uh, a twisty tie to put a pin in here. And then believe it or not, that pin will make these things a million times stronger, which is really nice. So, you can imagine me gluing those in. I'm just gonna run out of time if I don't show. So I'll show you when it's done. So just stick it in with your glue and your kicker. 
and then trim it once it's in there. You can also use this to paint if you want. Okay, so just take and strip off the end with your strippers. Some of these things come off real easy, some don't. That'll tell you which one to use. And slide this in here. Just like that. Just kind of feed it into the hole. And then you can glue it. Works really easy. Put a little drip of that stuff on there. Stick it into your your hole. Give it some kicker. And then use this to paint it. Same with the next one. See guys, you can just you can just use this to spread out the paint. And then just let them dry. Now we wait for them to dry. Okay, so I used this image to dictate exactly where I was going to place all these things. So I'm getting ready to put these in here next. Okay, so you just take and cut, cut the little wire. And then you've got your stabber. You can stab these things in right where your marks are. And you'll just basically do that until you're satisfied, and then you glue them in, and you enjoy. So I'll pause it and show you when it's done. Kick around the surface, not on this. Just grab a Q-tip, or not a Q-tip, a, a stick like this, and just uh, run a little bit of kicker down the tip. And then you can take and apply it like this, and that'll that'll take care of that last little teeny bit of residual. This needs to be pulled back just a little bit and in just a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so we're just gonna put a little bit of glue there, just to hold that in place a little better. Cool. So now, unfortunately, I don't want to use any more kicker on it, uh, just because I don't want to run the risk of causing another conflict. So now we just basically let it sit, and we enjoy and appreciate the beauty of the, the new cool scale detail. Let's compare it to the picture from online. Let's try to get you a backdrop that makes it show up a little better. There's a view from online, you got the three. Yes, it looks so very good. And that's going to be so cool when it's coming by. Awesome, guys. Thanks a lot for watching them. Don't forget to like and subscribe.